Hello everyone, I'm Stefan Chandler-Garcia, a developer advocate here at Salesforce. Today I want to talk to you about cross-component communication using custom events in JavaScript and how we can use custom events to send messages to and from different components on the page just by using those custom events. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. So let's say that we have two components that exist on a page and we want to send a message between them. This can be quickly achieved using custom events in JavaScript. They allow you to define an event that's fired in the browser. By allowing that event to bubble, it's able to be accessed via any components on the page. Now, that also means that it can be accessed outside of Lightning Web Components. We're not just talking about components in Salesforce here. Anything that has access to the window can listen for the event and then capture that value of the event. And so it's great for sending little bits of information, maybe the state to another component, but not necessarily always sensitive data. The custom event can be declared by just creating a new custom event in your component and then firing it. Now, you can also define custom events that don't bubble for communication between child and parent components. The difference is that you just don't include that bubbles attribute in the event when you're defining it. Now, for example, if you wanted to send some data up from a child to a parent component, you can use just a custom event that doesn't send that message out to the wider window. So a third way that you can communicate between components is by using Lightning Message Service. You can learn more about this by checking out the quick take in the description below, where we go through how to use Lightning Message Channels and to pass data through those channels between your components. But as I mentioned, let's go ahead and go back to our first example, where we're going to be using custom events to just send messages between our Lightning Web Components. So to get started, I've gone ahead and created two Lightning Web Components. One is our publisher that's going to be firing the event from the click of this button. And our second component is a subscriber component that's just going to be listening out for the event and then showing us an alert once the event has been received by the component. So now in the publisher's JavaScript file, we're going to take this handle click method and then add in some logic for firing the event. The first thing we need to do is create the event and we're going to store that in this event property. And we're just going to say new custom event and then define the event by giving it first a name. And so we're going to call this the message event here. And so every time the message event is fired, we can then subscribe to it elsewhere. And so we're then going to pass in the body of the event and we're first going to define the detail. And that's where we can put all of our data. In this case, we're just going to put the value of message in there and just pass that string over as part of the event. And then we can make the event propagate by adding bubbles is true to that object. And then that's what really allows the event to sort of push outside of the boundaries of the component and be listened to outside of the context of this component's container. We can then dispatch the event by just typing this dot dispatch event and then passing the event in. And that's pretty much it. Every time we click that button, it's going to call that handle click method and then create the event and then fire the event. So let's take a look at how we can subscribe to that. So in our subscribers JavaScript file, we're going to use the connected callback to add an event listener to the window. We can do this by just typing connected callback and then inside of that method, Go ahead and add window dot of add event listener and then pass in a name for the event. We're going to call it message in this instance. We can then pass in a method here within our component. We're going to say this dot handle message, which we've not written yet. And then we're just going to pass in any options. In this case, we're just going to pass false in. Now let's go ahead and write that handle message method here. We can just say handle message equals and then event and then use an arrow function to pass the event into this method here. And inside of that, let's go ahead and just create a property called detail to assign our event.detail.value to. And we're going to just use an alert and then pass that into a template string here and just display that detail value and then a little message for the user so that we can see that the event has been received. Lastly, we need to go ahead and remove this event listener. We're going to go ahead and do that in our disconnected callback. 
and we're just going to say window dot remove event listener pass in the details of that event in this case once again we're going to call it message and then the method and then our options and this will allow us to remove the event from the window when the components removed from the screen so let's pop over to Salesforce where I've added both of the components to an app and then let's go ahead and press that publish button and see what happens. So we select it and you can see here we have an alert that says message has been received showing that that subscriber component has been able to listen to the event published by the publisher component thus enabling you to pass those events between components. So now that you've seen how to send and consume custom events in our Lightning Web Components, I'd like us to take a look at how we can send more information and process that data in both of our components. You can find that out by checking out the next quick take with the link in the description below. Now, if you have any questions or feedback, you can follow me on Twitter at stefanwcg or email me at stefan.garcia at salesforce.com. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video on cross-component communication using custom events. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel, and click on the bell icon so that you can get notified each time that we post a video.